Uh, buenas noches. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I want to um, welcome you to Perotón Gallery, Perotón Gallery. Gabriel Rico is a Guadalajara-based artist. My name is Julio Cesar Morales. I'm a curator at the Arizona State University Art Museum. Um, I um, wanted to let you know that we're going to be um, doing a little Q&A together, a couple of questions, and then we're going to start maybe moving towards a couple of pieces and talk about the creation of the pieces and the influences that led him to do uh, the work. Um, Gabriel and I worked earlier this year together on his first um, U.S. museum show at the ASU Art Museum. Uh, tonight marks the, um, his first uh, gallery exhibition in the United States. So um, the first question I wanted to ask you, Gabriel, is the title of the exhibition. Um, you talk about the writer and artist William Blakes, and I wanted to ask you what influence of his is within this exhibition. Um, I already decided to use that title, uh, not precisely because I read a book from uh, Blake, I just found that uh, reference in another book is, is called uh, The Nature of Creativity. It's like a Stanford University book edited in 1979 by a psychologist. It's just talk about the nature of creativity. And I really liked uh, the meaning of that phrase related with my vision like an artist. Because for me, the one law can have many layers to, to, to of significance. Mm -hmm. Like uh, for me, the, the legacy uh, for the humanity, the knowledge we generate like species, can be a law for the natural world. So uh, that's that's the reason I I, I decide to use that. And uh, in other ways, I really want to share uh, some points I found in the in the in that book. Let's talk about the. It's like a test, right? <laughs> and uh, I want to ask to Julio to read a, a few, if you can. Yes, so this is called the Torrance Test of Creative Thinking. There are 17 points. We're just going to read Gabriel's top three. One is <clears throat> artic articulateness of storyboard, of storytelling, putting the response in the context, giving it an environment. Number 10 is expressiveness of the titles. Ability to transform from the figure to the verbal and give expression. And the last one is 15 or 16? 15. 15, which I think really <coughs> resonates in his work. And that is humor, juxtaposition of two or more introgrities. Yeah, so uh, I just, I mean, that book just gave me a nice uh, reflection of my creativity process. Uh, this and these uh, 70 points just mm -hmm. give me a, a more idea about the really, how can, like an artist, how is the, I'm concerned about uh, my creativity process. For, of course, the title is just the cherry in the cake. If you, you can just m mash the cake or you can just be precise if you use the title, the humor is the same. Mm -hmm. So for me, the humor is not, uh, is, is, is obvious in my work, but not, is not the line to define my art pieces. Uh, I talk with the humor, but the humor in, in, in a, is, not the, is not the first impression you receive for my work, I hope, uh, but, but it's there. Another interesting fact about Gabriel is actually he's trained as an architect. And so that leads us to our next question, and that is uh, how do you apply your training as an architect to, into your artworks? So uh, actually, in this point, I, I really, I mean, you can really see the geometry are involved in my process, like the geometry shapes, like the squirrel, circle, triangle, the, the base shapes, figures. Uh, in some point, that can be a very obvious. But in other ways, uh, you can just perceive some materials and the, the techniques. For me, the architect, is that the architecture is like uh, the combination of many materials to create something the human can use, like bricks, metal, concrete, uh, plastic, all together can create uh, buildings. And I, I think I can, I, I use normally that uh, possibility, the possibility of, of mix many materials 
to compose a, a single artwork in this mm -hmm. case. Uh, but in other ways, you can see the concrete I use in my, in my works or, or some metals or that, that's it. And then speaking of that, it's really great to do a studio visit with Gabriel. So maybe about three or four years ago, I went to visit him in his studio and it was really amazing to see his archive. Of course, you look at the artwork and there's knives, there's old pesos, <laughs> there's found material, there's taxidermy, so you can have a really great time visiting Gabriel in his studio. Exactly. Um, which leads me to the other, uh, next question, which I was really interested in, um, in regards to how he juxtaposes <coughs> these objects with taxidermy. So this question is, what's your relationship to nature? Or from that, from that matter, animals, did you grow up in a rural setting? Mm -hmm. Or was there a personal experience that led you to considering them as part of your work? Uh, okay, you just let me take me take me a few minutes mm -hmm. to return to the last question because I I, I, I need to see okay. my shit. And you have to you have to imagine Gabriel growing up um, in Jalisco. Yeah, in Lagos de Moreno. And, you know, and uh, you know he's three years old, and something affected him that basically now is coming out in his artwork. So. Uh, <laughs> um, just sorry about this, but I wanted to take uh, the, the second question the second you, 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 you give me. Go back, okay. Yeah, is uh, in some point I, I really want to share with you a text writer for the poet Percy Bysshe ba Shelley. Is a nineteen in the fifteenth century. Is a uh, English guy. Uh, but you know the science and and the and the art for me is. Uh, can be crisscrossed the line between, and it's it's a very nice possibility to see the that mm -hmm. that can happen. So this guy just uh, talk about this. This can you help me to? Yes. So this is Shelley, and um, this is the quote. Yeah, this is the. <clears throat> the sacred tasks of an artist are to absorb the new knowledge of the sciences and assimilate it to human needs to color it with human passion, passions, to transform it into the blood and bone of human nature. Beautiful quote. It's, yeah, I know. And uh, <laughs> it's really like a, you can use the science to receive uh, inspiration. The science is so practical, but mm -hmm. if you switch a little bit, right. you can just be involved in the magical world uh, and you can use that uh, practical meaning mm -hmm. in an artistical way. And that's really the normal way I, I just produce my artwork. The work. Okay. Sorry about that. So now that. we're going to jump yeah. back to the following question about um, animals, the nature, yeah. you growing up in a rural setting, or you know, how was these personal experiences um, reflected in our work now? Of course, I think the, my past have a hard influence in my practice, mm -hmm. like, an art, like an artist. Uh, of course, I remember when I just grown up and I just chill in the in the hills. Uh, I really enjoy to collect stones and branches. I don't know, it's, it's like a, it's very natural for me. Mm -hmm. And shells in the in the in the beach, and you know, depends on the place I, I was. And right. I just collect objects. It's the same practical I ju I normally do in in the city. Mm -hmm. So I just have uh, some walks. And one day I can discover a beautiful branch, and another a beautiful Jesus face, and another one a bottle of Coca-Cola. Mm -hmm. So it's about the animals. Is uh, I mean, when was the first time you saw a taxidermy, an animal that would have been taxidermy? Hmm. The first piece I used taxidermy. Actually, I showed the, with Perrotan Gallery one year ago in a show entitled uh, "Como te voy a olvidar." And it's like a circle uh, made with brass, neon, and a branch with a small fox. It's like a, it's, it's the first time I, I show mm -hmm. a piece of with taxidermy uh, to the public. Uh, but uh, I remember the first time I, I saw a skin uh, mm -hmm. of a pheasant, mm -hmm. and it's like 10 years ago. So I just be in love for that beautiful feathers and I just buy that skin yeah like mm -hmm. the skin yeah. and the then fur. the fur yeah and then it, that fur just was in my stock for 10 years and one day I just 
decide to use it in, in, in a com combined with another materials. Mm -hmm. But the magical thing with the with this kind of mater of animal is like a, for the brain can be very tricky to define at the first impression when you create a, like a composition like more dyna dynamic. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, it's hard to define in the first few seconds if the animal is still alive or not. So it's like a, it's like a tricky for the brain. Mm -hmm. For example, the animals, other animals mm -hmm. alive, like dogs, uh, when the dogs just come to see, come to be close to the right. to uh, dissected animals, mm -hmm. they really be obsessed about what if this guy is dead or not. Mm -hmm. So for the child's, uh, children, the, yeah. the, for the children's, is can be the same for the right. adult can be more easy but that's my interest right. you, we can really we you can create some magical moment mm -hmm. using this this right. kind of I object mean, for us this is maybe as close as we'll ever get to a bobcat or you want to <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so there's something magical about the repositioning yeah. of that within your artwork um last last month we actually spent some time in los angeles one night we stayed up really late listening to a lot of music <laughs> and we we're talking about the pop aspects of of icons in his work such as this equation that we'll talk about in a second. But that brings me to the question that we came up with, which is based on a pop band. Of course, you probably know him, but um, the title of the second album by the band The Smiths is called Meter's Murder. On the title track, uh, Morsi sings, the flesh you fancifully fry is not succulent, tasty or kind. It's deaf for no reason, and deaf for no reason is murder. In your last exhibition um, at the power station in Dallas, mm -hmm. you made this amazing, beautiful, um, giant piece of steak on the facade of the building that just hung like a necklace. And this is like a four-story building. Um, and was it ribeye or New York slice? I think it's a ribeye. Ribeye? Yeah. So the, the, the building was wearing this huge ribeye steak. And so I wanted to ask you um, in regards to your investigation about meat or your obsession with meat that of course you can see it in various um, places here can you talk a little bit yeah about of that? course i mean uh talking about that piece uh, precisely is like uh, i can be i can see reflect my uh, education like an architect in that kind of situations for me the architecture is a communion between the human and the bricks and the materials without one the other can lose sense. So if the human not can be added, the, the buildings is not sense to have these beautiful buildings we have. So in that point, uh, I just decide to express that idea literally. Just take a, stick a, a huge uh, piece of stake to the building to reflect like the communion between the meat and the, and the, and the material. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think it's the same in all my my work. It's mm -hmm. not about architecture, of course, but it's right. t talk about the the mundanity of the human, mm -hmm. who's a really I mean the meat can express equality uh, from uh, from the human to the all other animals can be the same way like the wood represent equality in all the natural 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 world. So it's, it's like that. Right. I like the the aesthetic, pop aesthetic, like a cartoon aesthetic, because mm -hmm. it's very easy to learn that object. You know, it's for, yeah. a, for a kid, it's very easy. You don't need to understand too much about art to see that is a piece of tape. Right. Yeah. And I think the last question before we walk around to look and, and talk a little bit more about the actual works itself goes back to his interest in, his, in the age of reason and historical technologies that has led you to infuse um, objects with humor, irony, or simply use objects the way they were not intended to be used. Can you help us understand your process from the theory to practice? Um, can you walk us through the process of one of your works here in the gallery? So perhaps maybe we can talk about this piece. Yeah, yeah, if you totally. want to talk about the influence of the age of recent in those types of technologies and ideas. Super. Yeah, I just want, don't want to be to define all the artworks here so i just want want to be just share with me these art pieces and if you want to come after the this interview i'm super open i really want to talk about the most uh, practical 
pieces here is that equation there uh, because it's already is is you, you don't need to move I mean I can I know that piece <laughs> so uh, I just want to describe the dynamic to create the that piece I just collect that elements in many in in in, in many different places like for example I tell you like I really like to visit uh, second-hand markets or second-hand stores and I really want to mix the kitsch culture with, uh, with some materials more coal like neon or brass and I really want to, li to look, I, I really like to mix uh, very natural materials like the rocks I found in the Pacific Ocean in Mexico I found the golf ball mm -hmm. in, the, in the matrix actually it's a matrix in Arizona, in Phoenix, I created both uh, brass signs. What, the first one is not equal, and this is like a uh, devenir. Like, a, like, like a, this is like a, the result of. And uh, the, the stake, of course, I, I create the stake, and the neon, of course. But the other, the other materials I just found in uh, many research mm -hmm. I like to, to, to be involved in my daily life. Right. So, and so if we wanted to resolve this or think about it, so we start with the I mean, meat and the neon, or yeah. well, do you start with... No, no, no. You, 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 yeah, what you, do you think? You need, I mean, <laughs> these pieces don't have a mathematical meaning. Okay. You, you, cannot, you cannot receive a mathematical result clearly. It's, a, it's just about... The, the, it's more <laughs> about to use the possibility of the composition mm -hmm. for the equation right. to create a new piece of art. Okay. Uh, I decided to start with this series. Uh, actually, this is the nine of the, of, of the, ninth, the ninth piece for, mm -hmm. for that series. The ninth because, equation. Yeah, because uh, in some point I just read about the aesthetic of the beauty, the beauty aesthetic in the equations. Mm -hmm. Uh, but for me, it came, it's, it's, it's kind of difficult to, to see that beauty mm -hmm. in the mathematical equation. So right. I just decided to change the letters and the numbers for objects I really like. Mm. That's the beginning of this series. You can read the equation like a normal equation from the left to the right, right exactly. and in a Western uh, type mm -hmm. of, of equation. But actually, you can uh, you can receive a, you can read like a, an equation. For example, a stake elevate mm -hmm. derive, der, derives mm -hmm. for in a fraction. This fraction multiply Coca Cola for a Jesus and divided in a. I don't know how can I, it's like a pumpkin, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry. Gord. Gord. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, multiply with a school of a wild pig or hog. Mm -hmm. And he said, who's at, its, um, at that time they buy an avocado and uh, all shoes, multiply uh, a flower of, uh, it's not ceramic, it's plastic. No, actually no? it's more fine than ceramic, it's porcelain. Porcelain. And then you have the sign is like uh, the integral from a baseball and an orange uh, from glass, it's not equal. From a matrix made what? From 49 rocks and one minutes. ball and two branches. Yeah. And maybe uh, if you want to talk uh, quickly about this piece that uh, it is slight influence with the yaki, the yaki dance, which is basically uh, um, one of the oldest uh, Native American tribes in the Americas. And half of the tribe. Basically, they, they were kicked out of Mexico after the revolution, and the majority of them ended up in Arizona. And uh, we went to a yaki dance that happens once a year, which is the oldest non-Western dance um, that has you know, been around. And so do you want to talk a little bit about that experience and maybe some of the pieces within yeah. the work? So basically, uh, this piece is talk about the possibility to, do, to, this, to decompose uh, an animal in a meaning, like a concept. <coughs> Sorry. You can see a deer hood in the in the in the angle. I just found that object like that, and then I received for a good friend uh, that knife. And that knife, you can see a, a piece of horn from from a deer. 
So I start to play with that elements. And in some point, it's like a, it's like a hunt, like a hunting dance. You know, it's like, I mean, you can kill the, the deer with the, with the knife. It's like a, it's not juxtaposition. It's more like a, something came impossible, mm -hmm. can be impossible. It's, let me remember that the, okay. And of the course, name? it's like the modernist cube that is of formed course. as well. It's like how the, how the, our knowledge kill the nature mm -hmm. in some way. That's, that's like a, or can be, yeah. yeah. Well, and also the question about did modernity really reach third world country like Mexico and some other spaces as well. Can you also talk about the devalued currency you usually use in your work? Sometimes, or one of the things that you have to look for certain things in Gabriel's work, sometimes they're hidden. For example, sometimes the stand of something underneath, there are these um, uh, coins from Mexico, pesos that have been devalued. You know, they're from the 70s or 60s. <coughs> talk about the coins. Sure. And so uh, that coins is normally is come from this, the, the, the time I was a child in Mexico, like 90, I mean 81, 82, 83, mm -hmm. that years. Uh, so I, I feel directly related with the piece because I use that kind of pieces of my past. Mm -hmm. But uh, in, a, in another level, you can, I just want to question the real value of the art pieces with, an, with use it, hypothetical mm -hmm. value coins. So you cannot buy nothing even in Mexico with that right. coins. And it's, it's like that. It's like the hypothetical value of the coins mixed with the human <coughs> heritage and the natural world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, do you want to talk about one other piece, or do we want to open it up to? Yeah, one? I think it's time to just join with me the show. <laughs> and uh, if you want to talk about more uh, precise pieces, I'm I'm here. And thank you for coming. And thank you, Peggy, thank you. for the show.